Hey guys, Christian here and I am from Simply Maths Tutoring and today I'm putting together a little video to help the Year 12 students who are currently going through further mathematics. Now the reason I wanted to put this video together is because over the last couple of weeks I've been meeting with a lot of students who are studying further maths and what I've been finding is that a lot of these students uh, actually don't have any idea how further maths as a subject is assembled and it's quite a unique assembly as far as subjects are concerned and having that background information can actually be really useful to you in your studies. So I wanted to break down exactly how further maths is put together. Now essentially the way further maths works is there are six modules available for study. They are data analysis, financial mathematics, linear mathematics, um, uh, geometry and trig, network and decision mathematics, and matrices. So six modules. Now the interesting part about that is, is you won't actually study all six. The first two modules that I mentioned, data analysis and finance maths, are considered the core modules. Now that means that every school in the state will study those two modules. Data analysis is by far the largest and most important of those modules, and typically speaking the content will take you the better part of term one to complete. You'll likely have two, three, possibly even four sacks on data analysis alone, but that depends entirely on how your teacher and your school decide to lay out the sacks, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. The other four modules are what are called the optional modules, and the way that these work is that every school in the state of Victoria chooses two out of the four modules to teach and deliver to their classes. Now, typically speaking, this decision is based purely on what they believe is going to achieve the best result and what they're confident their teachers can actually deliver. Now, having said that, uh, there tends to be a bit of a trend. So with a lot of schools that I've found, uh, the most common module by far is matrices, uh, with geometry and trig coming in a close second. Network and decision maths typically comes third, and the linear relationships is actually the least common module that is chosen by schools. Now, this is not because the modules are any easier or harder comparatively, it's just that the content is quite varied and so schools will typically play two modules in which they feel that they have a strength. Okay, uh, so if you are in a school that is maybe working on some of the less common modules, that's not something to be concerned about at all, it just means that your school and teachers are actually confident that those are the modules in which they can help you to perform the best. That's all there is to it. Uh, every school obviously chooses two out of the four modules, which means that your textbook, which includes all six modules, there are a couple of chapters in there that you will never really look at, which I hope is a little bit encouraging when you look at that monstrous thick textbook and wonder how on earth you're gonna get through all the content in just, you know, nine months. The good news is that you don't actually have to because your school will selectively choose the modules that are going to work for you. Now a question I commonly get is, I don't like the modules that my school chose, can I do other ones? The answer is actually yes, but you are required to do the sacks that the school sets you. So if for example your school chose Geometry and Trig and you had a uh, desperate hate for Geometry and Trig, let's say. The reality is unfortunately you do still have to sit the sacks, but at the end of the year in the exam time, you can actually choose to do a different module. Now, in my five years of tutoring, I've had exactly one student who went down this path. Uh, he performed very well because he self-taught geometry and trig instead of working on linear relations, I believe. But however that tends to work out, uh, he was actually very dedicated and very motivated to take on extra time outside of class to learn a completely new module because he felt passionately that he would be able to perform better. It is a rare situation, but technically it is an option available to you. So if that's something that you wanted to pursue, I would advise maybe looking into getting a tutor or some outside help to help you speed that process along. So that pretty much sums up how the actual topics are worked out. Now as far as the SACs and exams are concerned, I just want to give a quick warning. Any information that I give about SACs is, is very general, and that is because uh, schools actually choose how they deliver their own SACs. So all I can give you in this video is a brief estimate of what I believe the SACs will look like, and that is based on the experience that I've had with past year 12 students. But for a full outline of how your SACs are gonna be laid out, it is best to talk to your maths teacher. Now having said that, the pattern that I've seen throughout my working with students in further maths tends to be something like this. Typically speaking, I see uh, roughly three sacks on the data analysis component, uh, one sack maybe two on the finance component, and one sack specifically on the each of the optional modules. That typically averages out to maybe six sacks for the year in further maths. Now it can be less or it can be more, it really depends on what your teacher has set up 
or what the uh, teachers at your school collectively have decided upon. So it's always best to check with them to see what the outline is going to be. Now the exam, on the other hand, is something that I can give you a great amount of detail on because that does not change across the state. So at the end of the year for further maths, you will have two exams. Each exam will be 1.5 hours in duration, plus the 15 minutes reading time that you're given at the start. The first exam will be entirely multiple choice questions and will consist of all six available modules, which means within the exam, you actually choose the sections you complete based on the modules that you learnt throughout the year. So there will be two modules that you leave completely blank, and that is how the exam is actually designed. Uh, that same situation occurs in the second exam, the only difference really being that instead of multiple choice questions, exam two is built entirely around extended answer questions. Now in both exams in Further Maths, you are allowed full access to a calculator and full access to your summary notes book. It is only in Methods and Specialist that you're expected to complete an exam without a calculator. So that's actually really important and it brings me to my final piece of advice for today's video uh, for Further Maths students, and that is this. Throughout the year, your summary book is going to be one of the most important pieces that you keep. Now, there are a couple of key reasons for this. The first and possibly the most important one is the fact that as you complete each module, you move on and do not revisit that module again. Modules do not interact with each other in Further Maths. They are all very sub segregated, which means that once you're done with data analysis, you have no reason in class to look at data analysis again, which means it's entirely up to you to be able to revise and keep on top of current content. Now the summary book is probably the best way to do this because even right now, you can be working on your summary book and working on the data analysis portion. You should have that section of your book completed by the time you do your data analysis sack, so long before the exams actually come to bear. What's really important here is that you don't fall behind with the summary book because there is nothing worse than trying to cram on a summary book, especially on a topic that you haven't seen in the last six months. I see it all the time as we get towards the end of the year. If I visit a student who hasn't worked on their summary book yet, they're trying to remember things from data analysis which was studied six months back and they've just got no idea what's going on. So because data analysis, for example, and all of the other modules follow this same example, because data analysis is so segregated, you can complete your summary notes as soon as you have covered that information in class. You don't need to wait until later to get more information because once you're finished with something in Further Maths, you're done. There's nothing else that you need to cover. You'll be straight on to the next topic, which will likely have nothing to do with the previous one. Uh, it's a very, very separate. There is no cross interaction, which gives you both an advantage and a disadvantage. Disadvantage being that you have no uh, reason to study it unless you're, you're self-motivating. But on the plus side, it means that you can have your summary notes completed the day that the course content is completed, which is my piece of advice to you as further math students. So I hope this video has been really helpful and clears up a couple of the questions that you have about the subject that you've been working on for the last couple of months. If you do have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can either hit me up with an email, give me a phone call, or message me on Facebook. I love hearing from you guys and hearing about some of the questions you have and some of the things that you have to say. So if you have any questions about further maths, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. I hope this video has been really helpful for you. My name is Christian and I will catch up with you later. Bye for now.